Well, thank you for the opportunity to present this, uh, this project. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the SEC funded transformative land investment project. Um, just as a caveat, I mean, this is not a purely research project. This is largely a development oriented project uh, with the, the general purpose of helping countries better leverage agro investments in support of a food systems transition. Uh, so ultimately, what it tries to do is to strengthen the contribution of agro and forestry investments to tenure security, environmental resilience, and social inclusion. So the way it does that is on the one hand by improving private sector compliance with national and global regulations and best practices. So we're talking about uh, globally recognized responsible business frameworks, such as the CFS Responsible Agricultural Investment Principles, the Voluntary Guidelines on the Governance of Tenure, um, and increasingly of harder regulations like the EU deforestation regulation. Um, the way we try to do that is also through business model innovation. And I must say there are striking parallels between this project uh, and the Living Landscapes project, which is uh, encouraging the sea. And it's good to know. So I think there are a lot of opportunities for cross-learning there. Um, ultimately, TLI is embedded in SDC's Global Food Security Program and emerged from primarily their commitments to the voluntary guidelines and the governance of tenure. So phase one of the project, uh, the, the objective is a long-term objective for us is, is to have three phases. Uh, the first phase will run from 2022 to 2025, and the second one from 2025 to 2028. Uh, the project's led by C4ECRAF with support from Land Equity International, Verkoft based in Bangkok, and SNV, who are our technical implementing partners. Uh, focuses on five countries that have been a major object of land-based investments. Uh, these are Ghana, Ethiopia, Mozambique, Myanmar, and Laos. Um, in the last, say, 15 years or so, there has been a transfer of over a million hectares of land in each of these countries, uh, which has produced a lot of land-related conflicts uh, and smallholder displacement and competition. So, so what is the, the, the general premise of the, pro the project? Um, the idea for us and, and the initial call from SDC was to support uh, the VGTT compliance. Um, our thinking is, is that, okay, um, if investors comply with these international regulations and standards, that doesn't necessarily mean that they contribute positively to their host countries. Uh, it might reduce negative impacts, but it doesn't necessarily mean they produce positive impacts. It's much like the VGTTs. If companies respect tenure rights, that doesn't necessarily mean that their contribution to local populations is positive. Um, the most important thing, and, and what we're seeing in practice from, from the last 10 years of research on this, is that a lot of these sort of commitments and frameworks produce a lot of unintended consequences. Um, I, I think the prime example is, is now what is emerging from the EU deforestation regulation, uh, and also corporate zero deforestation commitments that companies are trying to eliminate deforestation from their supply chain. Uh, the effect being that they are excluding smallholders from their supply chain uh, because they're too costly and expensive and uh, difficult to trace. Um, so for us, uh, in order for, for these sort of agro enterprises to have a positive effect, a net positive effect, they really need to change the way they do business. And their business models need to become more consistent with sustainable food systems principles, where this notion of trade-offs and holistic perspectives is a lot more central. Uh, so indeed, for us, uh, issues of social inclusion, environmental stewardship, governance, and societal issues should become part of the very fabric of how investments do business. And this demands a systems perspective, and it also demands co-creation of business models and business ecosystems that resonate on the one hand with national priorities, but also with the needs and practices of smallholders. For us, what, what we are trying to do with this project is essentially help move um, companies along what we call the TLI continuum. Um, so they're somewhere on a continuum, and this continuum is defined by us along a set of uh, TLI principles. Uh, these principles include, for example, strengthening of land rights, expansion of market opportunities for smallholders, um, promoting adoption of agroecological practices, 
um, and supply chain uh, shortening, amongst other things. So we recognize that you can't move an investor at the bottom of the continuum to the top straight away. This is a gradual, sustained, long-term process that requires dedicated support. So the, the way we do this is, is through um, sort of a four-pronged approach, I guess. We recognize that you can't do these things in isolation in a piecemeal sort of way. We have to tackle this thing at, at multiple different fronts. So the first thing you have to do is to prevent negative impacts even ever from happening. Um, and, and the way we're trying to do that is to institutionalize what we call a risk reward tool um, that helps governments identify and screen for un inherently unsustainable investment models from the outset. So that that feeds into the approval process and those sorts of investors are never afforded any licenses. Um, for those that do, um, what becomes important is, is then to control how positive and negative impacts play out. They never play out, but they have to be managed. Um, this is often a policy and regulatory issues. But at the same time, uh, the investors also have to be encouraged to do better. They have to be encouraged to adopt better business models. So the way we're doing this is, is, is thinking about, okay, how does the national business ecosystem needs to evolve? And we are doing that through a series of multi-stakeholder platforms uh, in each of the five countries. So these are essentially three-year platforms that bringing uh, private sector, civil society, and government together to talk about what a food systems transition looks like in their respective countries and how businesses uh, or private sector can best be leveraged for that purpose. But, and then finally is, is sort of our improved part is, okay, you can incentivize an investor to do better, um, but that doesn't mean the investor knows how to do better. That doesn't mean that a commitment translates to a practice. So for that, we have uh, conceived these business, what we call business transformation labs. Those are nested at the national level within government structures. And the idea of these labs are, is that they provide technical backstopping support and partnership brokering support um, to uh, agricultural enterprises across the country, especially new entrants. Um, then concretely, um, just to go into a little bit of sort of activities that we've been doing this year, for the risk rewards uh, tool. So the, the tool essentially is, is, is a simulation model. Um, and the idea behind the simulation model is that with minimal input and use of secondary data, it can very cheaply uh, and easily estimate what types of costs and benefits are likely to be associated with planned investment. So this is really before an investment is approved. Uh, this uses existing data. So we're talking about uh, investor feasibility studies, uh, siting plans, spatial data, sensor data, carbon data. And what the model essentially produces is an estimate of the value of loss and gain production, emissions associated with land use change, uh, displacement risk, employment potential, and FX earnings. Um, the model will eventually be, be institutionalized within uh, certain ministries. And they'll also be trained uh, to use this tool appropriately to inform uh, their own licensing processes. Then the multi-stakeholder platform is essentially a facilitated learning and co-creation space um, for these different stakeholders. The, the, the initial part of it is, is to sort of collaboratively identify national food systems challenges and priorities and evaluating entry points for improving the enabling environment in support of transformative land investment. Now, once those priorities are identified, uh, we are co-developing strategies and action plans on how to improve the enabling environment and ultimately test their viability and support implementation uh, in phase two. Uh, what we've done in 2022, I mean, the project's been going for about seven, eight months now, um, is we've done an enabling environment assessment. So the full assessment of what the enabling environment is, how it disables or discourages uh, investments that are consistent with the OLI principles. Um, and based on that, we're, we're developing what we call a business ecosystem index. So there's essentially an index for monitoring how well um, countries or country ecosystems are corresponding with uh, the TLI 
principles. Um, five multi or four of the five multi-stakeholder platforms have now been established. Government buy-in has been achieved. Terms of reference have been designed, and initial planning activities uh, have come off the ground. Uh, the business transformation labs are, uh, like I said, they're, they're technical support facilities and a co-innovation space. Um, there are the idea is that they become financially self-sustainable service units nested uh, within um, the one-stop shops in countries. So, so the investment promotion agencies um, that are accessible to willing investors across the country in agriculture and forestry. And the way the business transformation labs work is that they, they create a, a, a space for investors and communities to co-create ba uh, bankable solutions. So solutions that help improve smallholder production practices uh, and make these more consistent with agroecology principles to improve corporate sustainability policies in line with international frameworks and ultimately to devise business models that help achieve that. Um, then once, once that is identified about, okay, what do these solutions look like? Our role is, is to identify capacity and resource gaps and broker the necessarily necessary public and private and civic relationships to actually deliver on the business models that are designed. And then ultimately what the, the BTLs, Business Transformation Labs do, is provide backstopping support to implementations, uh, systematic performance monitoring, and also um, support to communities. Um, then finally, uh, and then this is sort of a, a way that, okay, we have these, these different processes, but there needs to be a countervailing force. And a lot of the countries we recognize that grassroots organizations are ill-equipped to effectively engage the private sector and also to engage in national policy processes. So what we are doing is creating a community of practice for grassroots organizations, which is meant to foster uh, collaborative learning, also planning, uh, collective collaborative proposal development, but ultimately to devise a strategy about how they can improve their collective capabilities to support businesses, to advocate against unsustainable business uh, conduct, but ultimately also, also to support uh, the MSPs. Um, then the final component is, is looking more at global alignment. Uh, we are working across different communities. So sort of in the respect, responsible investment space, you have three or four very disparate communities. So you have the, the, the tenure right social justice, justice uh, movement. You have the um, responsible investment movement. And you have the zero deforestation movement. And that's essentially where investors are veering towards. And between those movements, there's very little cross-fertilization. There's a lot of territorialism, and, and, and that has to be overcome because these, these trade-offs between these sorts of initiatives and investors adopting these sorts of instruments is, is really quite detrimental in practice. So what we're trying to do is, is create space for dialogue across these three core communities of practice and essentially link that to the work on, on, on food system sustainability and ultimately uh, agroecology.